Hello everyone, this video is a little different from normal. One of my viewers sent me a video from Simon Dan on a topic that I tackled a couple years ago, telling me that Dan's version was embarrassing and hand wavy and apparently people in the comments weren't even calling him out on it, and I'm afraid I have no real choice but to agree with that. Cue the angry fans, I suppose, and let's get going. The other night, if you were in my live, you got to watch a feed from the International Space Station that a gentleman on TikTok recorded. It's a very intriguing video. It looks as though possible alien craft are flying through the view of the camera. The first one he points at, he claims, looks almost gold colored. Okay, so we're watching a video from the ISS, and fortunately whoever sent Night God 333 this video has the courtesy to move the camera up so we can see that this says ISS HD live feed. Later in the video he shows the full title and points to it. So now we have a first step if we want to know what's going on here before we even have to look at the video. Just type in ISS HD live feed into whatever search engine, and it'll come up with several different options as to where to watch it. I don't actually know where in particular this guy's watching it, but it doesn't really matter. The point is here's what that video Feed looks like. Oops, sorry, I guess we're kind of in the dark there, but we actually can learn something from this already. We have a whole bunch of what look like messed up pixels, they're showing red, white, green, whatever, and that's what we see when the camera's in the dark looking at the darkness. Now those are not stars or anything like that, as you'll know for sure when you see where this camera's pointing. Here's what it looks like in the daytime. Yeah, so right off the bat we at least know what we're looking at, and that's an Earth-facing camera looking down from the ISS as it goes through its orbit. So what did Night God have to say about this? Well, we already heard it, but let's listen again. The first one he points at he claims looks almost gold colored. So he's claiming that this one dot that the original video creator is helpfully pointing to is a UFO, or possibly a UFO. But let's think for a second about what we have here. We have kind of a blurry, compressed, motion blurred, probably overexposed video of this guy's TV. On the screen we see a bunch of stationary dots, now where have we seen those before? Well, we saw them here, albeit with less problems in the video to exaggerate them. So the stationary elements here are pretty easy to explain, we understand those. And the alleged UFO is a bright looking object, moving slowly along to the left. Where have we seen objects moving roughly that speed to the left? We saw those here. It's exactly the right direction and about the right speed. So with no further information at this point I'd probably already be forming a guess inside my head. There would be more to do to establish firmly what's going on, but at this point I would already feel pretty confident. Okay, I would argue satellite here, but let's continue. Oh. Okay, well I guess it's a possibility. That's not quite where I would go with it, but that's okay, that's just a first guess. We'll see where this goes. And then this one is significant. Yeah, that is definitely starting to reinforce my ideas about this. Okay, that's not a satellite. Interesting. Okay, good, I was right. That was just a first guess before. All it took was getting a bit more information, and now he's got it. I've got a theory of what that actually is, but let's see what else he has to say first. Yeah, let's see, and then you and I together can really stick it to him. Look at the shape. Yeah, that has the general type of shape of the kind of thing I'm thinking about. Look at what looks like at the top of it is a possible maybe a head or a shape of a head. Oh, okay, that's also a possibility, I guess. We're getting all kinds of options here. Maybe a figure standing on top of it, possible wings, I'm not sure. So we're thinking angel now? Or a dragon with a guy on its back? Are we talking about a UFO like a flying saucer UFO, or are we talking about a UFO like an unidentified flying dragon? Well, I guess if it's unidentified, it could be anything, right? Because wings would be so useful in space. Maybe it has wings to fly within the atmosphere once it arrives from space? I don't know any better than you do. It is odd, though, how little it appears to be moving if it's some sort of a winged flying creature. Like, it appears to have no rotation, it's not moving its wings, it's not doing anything really, it's just moving slowly to the left at the same rate as everything else in this camera. It's like a glowing cardboard cutout. And also, if it's not right up close to the ISS, if it's closer to the Earth, if it's in the atmosphere or something, it's gotta be huge. I don't know about all this, I'm not aware of any reports of anything like this, I feel like that's something somebody might have noticed. You know, I could be wrong, but I'm starting to think it might be a a little far-fetched that this is an unidentified flying angel. And just to note, people, there was a explosion of a satellite in the area. Some people were calling it space debris. Myself, I do not think it looks like space debris. Well, I hate to agree with the conspiracy guy, but I kind of have to in this case. Because you are looking at it through the eyes of a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm not, I promise. There was in fact an explosion but it wasn't a satellite. It was an old Russian rocket motor, which was used back in the day to put the old GLONASS navigation system in orbit. And after the explosion, it created 16 separate fragments of space debris. Now, is it a coincidence that the ISS live feed picks up some space debris 
around the same time that this happened? Probably not. Let's hear our guy make up some theories anyway. Um... Um... Suddenly I find myself overflowing with things to say, and yet I'm at too early of a point in the video to want to say them. I'm just gonna push all that back into the bottle, just for a little while, and I'll get my chance pretty soon. It looks like numerous possible craft. Some of them are semi-cloaked. Semi-cloaked? They're brightly glowing. That's why you can see them on the nighttime side of the earth. Whatever they're doing, it's like the opposite of cloaking. Not at all a pointless thing. You either cloak or you don't if you've got the technology. I suppose that's true, although what if you only have the technology to semi-cloak? Partially cloaking is better than none, right? A lot of them, notice how they move in unison. I wouldn't say a lot of them, I would say all of them. Which again, combined with the direction and the speed and the brightness, I would say is a pretty big hint as to what we're actually looking at here. It makes me wonder if a larger craft is actually cloaked and what you're seeing is small portions of the craft that aren't cloaking. Oddly, you're not entirely wrong. What we're looking at is something extremely large moving along underneath us, or us moving along over top of it, if you prefer, most of which is cloaked and not visible, and we're only seeing very small pieces of it moving by. So you are right, it's just that you take that to entirely the wrong conclusion because you've misidentified horribly what that very large object is, why it's cloaked and in what sense, and what these smaller pieces of it are. Or it's all debris from one incident. Okay, that's an option to... <laughs> Weirdly, in this case, the UFO guy is more right than you are. Not 100% though. It's very intriguing nonetheless. The last craft that comes in is massive. It's massive, all right. In fact, by my estimates, that biggest craft is something around 100 kilometers wide. It's going to be pretty impressive. You just wait. Notice. Looks almost as if there's a possible fleet. Well, yeah, there's, there's lots of those little ones around the area of the big one. All the time. Every single day for years and years and years. Oh, dear. Fleet, he says. A fleet. Sure, matey. Sure. Got him. There's more up here, yep. ISS HD live feed. Thank you for, in addition to the guy pointing to it, also verbally informing us of exactly where to go to figure out what this is. Definitely baffling, especially this. And there it is, the mothership. If you were confused up until this point and you have not seen my video on this previously, this is the moment where you should suddenly say, oh, now I get it. Hey, Looney Tunes conspiracy theorist Gina Maria Colvin Hill, who thinks birds outside her house are UFOs, spider people live on the moon, Lord of the Rings is real because it's written in a book, plasma portals and plasma beings are invading countries all around the world, her laptop screen reflecting her keyboard upside down is a sign that it's a black mirror put there to send her a message, and out of focus stars are actually spaceships. Would you care to tell us what it is? Because it's so obvious to everyone. The moment I saw it, the moment it was shared with me, um, I knew what I was looking at. A city. Thank you, Gina. That's... Right there in space. Not entirely correct, but very close. Like I said, it makes me wonder if the larger portion is cloaked and then that portion just happened to slip through the cracks and that's what we're seeing on the ISS feed. Well, yeah, the largest portion of the craft, that being the Earth, is cloaked, at least on the nighttime side that we're on, by nighttime. And Houston, Texas here slipped through the cracks because it's an enormous city full of lights. So now that we're all on the same page, over to you, Dan. That looks how blown up rocket motors should look, to be honest. Are you fucking with me? I've been told this is the only footage of that particular event that has been presented on any platform. No, because of the orbital inclination of the ISS and the fact that it goes around the Earth every hour and a half, it goes over Houston fairly often. And of course, most of the time, unless there's some sort of a signal problem, that's caught on the ISS live feed. Feel special because it's not out there. Good job you were around to report on it then. Yeah, and it's a good job you were around to report on it too, Dan. Look, man, people get things wrong. Okay, getting things wrong is one thing. The problem is you didn't try to get this right. As soon as you saw that sort of wheel and spoke lacy pattern of lights, that kind of spiderweb shape, 
frankly, it should have been instantly obvious generally what you were looking at. Not that it was Houston. That took me some effort to figure out as well. Although I don't think it was that hard. I don't think it took me more than about an hour. But only one thing looks like that when you're looking down at the Earth from space at night. Now, let's go back to this part. That looks how blown up rocket motors should look, to be honest. That looks how blown up rocket motors should look? In what way does that look how blown up rocket motors should look? Not just while looking down at the Earth at night from the ISS, but in general. What we're talking about, I think, is an Ullage motor from a Russian upper stage originally that disintegrated or blew up on April 15th, 2022. It was an old Russian rocket motor, which was used back in the day to put the old GLONASS navigation system in orbit. And after the explosion, it created 16 separate fragments of space debris. Here's what that upper stage looks like. Just some picture from some article reporting on it. And this shows the location and shape and relative size of the Ullage motors. And I'm trying to understand in what way this explosion is supposed to produce this lacy, spider webby, static pattern of light. Maybe you can help me out with that, but that's just not clicking in my head. Right, so the disintegration happens, pieces blow off in arbitrary directions, probably there's some amount of gas released, you know, because otherwise why was it exploding? And so you might end up with a kind of cloud of debris and gas that if the sun hits it right, highlights parts of it. That maybe I could accept. But of course that wouldn't look anything like what we're seeing here. I'm guessing more that the idea isn't that this is sort of the cloud left over after the explosion, but an individual piece of debris and then that explains why it looks kind of artificial. I think that makes the most sense, but then I still don't understand in what way the appearance of this object is supposed to be derived through explosion from a motor that looks like this. I don't see the similarity. If this was exploded Russian machinery, I would expect it to have some kind of identifiable similarity, not to be entirely transformed into a completely different structure. That would have to be explained. And then, of course, the illumination. We're on the nighttime side of the Earth. What's illuminating this debris? I know it's not the sun, because on this ISS live feed, there's parts of the ISS that protrude into the camera's view, and they become illuminated by the sun oftentimes before the land that we see below us does. So that's fine. But the ISS is farther away from the Earth than this thing would have to be. And so how could the debris be illuminated in the ISS not? So I don't understand what we're saying we're looking at precisely. I don't understand how it's illuminated. I don't understand as well why we think this would pass this close to the ISS with no comment. I mean, it looks huge within the field of view. It has to be pretty close. The motor itself that disintegrated and produced the debris is minuscule. It's that little volleyball stuck on the side. And speaking of which, I used an orbital velocity calculator to figure out how fast this should be moving relative to the ISS, and based on its given apogee and perigee of 19,074 kilometers and 388 kilometers respectively, I see it going around 2 kilometers a second faster than the ISS. The calculator brings back the ISS going around 7.7 .7 kilometers a second, which is correct. This motor should be going around 9.7. And most likely it should be going in the same direction as the ISS. Typically things orbit in the same direction. The direction of the Earth's spin. Just for reasons of practicality. But instead of it appearing to move two kilometers a second past the camera, which at the distance it would have to be would probably not even take up one frame of video, we see it drifting lazily along, perfectly straight across the screen to the left. So in the wrong direction. Now the ISS orbits between about 413 and 422 kilometers. As I say, this motor was orbiting with a perigee of 388 kilometers. That's not much within the orbit of the ISS. This would be an unlikely shot at the best of times. And it's kind of hard to explain why, considering that the orbital inclination of this motor was 65 degrees, it appears to be moving directly left in a straight line parallel to the bottom of the screen across the camera of the ISS that's orbiting at an inclination of about 52 degrees, and interestingly showing no signs of rotation while it does it. Quite the accomplishment after an explosion. And also, if this motor's orbiting at an inclination of about 65 degrees, and the ISS is at 52 degrees, and the only time this motor is going to be just a few kilometers closer to the Earth than the ISS is very close to its perigee, does it even make sense this motor would ever be directly between the Earth and the ISS? So once more, here's what you said about it. That looks how blown up rocket motors should look, to be honest. Does it, though? Let's hear our guy make up some theories anyway. Because I can figure out literally no way in which that's what a blown up rocket motor should look like under these circumstances. How did you figure out that's how it should look? What's your reasoning for that? When the conspiracy guy and Gina Maria Colvin Hill are getting closer to the actual facts of the matter than you are, well, you should consider making some adjustments. I'll put it that way. 
Look, I wouldn't call you out if I just thought you made an error or a mistake or even just misunderstood something scientific or whatever. But when all the information is there at your fingertips and it's this easy to figure out and you still don't put in any effort to do so and you just make something up based on entirely nothing and confidently send it out to at this point like 78,000 people, the vast majority of whom swallowed it up without thinking about it as you can see from the comments. And when you do all this despite the fact that you're perfectly aware that you never looked into any of this and put in zero effort, and thus you're basically guaranteed to be spreading misinformation and cementing these conspiracy theorists in their mindsets, and making them think that because you have no good explanation maybe this really is a UFO, then I think that's worthy of some criticism. That's not helpful to anyone in any way except to you, because if you half-ass it you can put out a whole bunch of videos every week, but if you don't you probably can't. It would be tiring. You are looking at it through the eyes of a conspiracy theorist. Well, thank you all for watching. If you would be so kind before you go, please give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. If you really like the channel, please do consider supporting with even like a couple bucks a month. It helps a lot. And huge thanks to the people who've already made that choice to support on Patreon or Subscribestar, PayPal, YouTube members, whatever. Thank you very much. If you want early access, sign up to the email list at list.logic.com. Join the Discord, and I'll see you next time.